And welcome to our services on the Feast of the Resurrection. And we're delighted to have the handbells playing. And one of the, the players mentioned to me that the piece that they played this morning was exactly the same piece that they were rehearsing and never got to play pre-COVID. So the circle has gone around. And we're delighted to be here together to celebrate that most wonderful of occasions when our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The order of service is printed out for you in the worship folder, and page references are, of course, to the service book. It's basically Divine Service Setting 2. A warm welcome to guests and visitors who are with us this morning, especially as you're visiting family and friends in order to celebrate this feast. Due to the fact that this is the major feast, in fact, it is the number one feast in the church calendar, it's appropriate that we begin with an opening hymn that is also a processional hymn. So I invite you to rise as we begin with hymn number 457, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. I was pushed hard so that I was falling. The Lord is my strength and my song. Hark, glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. I shall not die, but I shall live. The Lord has chastened me sorely. Open to me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. The stone which the builders rejected. This is the Lord's doing. This is the day which the Lord has made. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and that same Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. 
No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another uh, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through 26. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong in Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Angels have rolled the stone away. Sing hallelujah. 
we rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ may be seated for him 
which took place in another garden where there was a new tomb, now only slightly used, cracked open like an egg to release the life within. We use eggs as a symbol of the resurrection. Billy Graham once declared, if I were an enemy of Christianity, I would aim right at the resurrection because that's the heart of Christianity. Why is Easter so big? What makes the resurrection of Jesus so significant? Pretty obvious. Death is defeated. So first it announced victory over sin and death. Someone has been to the other side of death and returned to tell us that there is a way through it. Jesus arose from the grave and assured his followers that they would also rise from the dead through him. The real you is not going to end simply in a cemetery somewhere, but can be with Christ and the faithful dead in heaven forever. The second reason the resurrection is so important is that it was God's confirmation of Jesus's saving act on the cross. Easter morning was God's stamp of approval on Jesus's sacrifice of himself. Sins are gone and our records sealed and stamped, paid in full at Calvary. We are reconciled to God and so we can now live our lives as his dear children under his care and protection no matter what happens. The third reason resurrection is so important is that it gives us a preview of how history is going to end. When the curtain of world history falls, no ideology, no weapons system, no computer system, no other system will reign supreme. Jesus alone will be revealed high and lifted up. Then every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, as Paul tells us in Philippians. Does it all seem too good to be true or wishful thinking? An elderly woman made her living selling artificial fruit. And one day a customer complained the fruit that she sold was not realistic enough. She pointed to an apple the seller of artificial fruit had placed on top of the pile and said that it was too red, too round, too big to be a real apple. At that point, the fruit lady picked up the apple and started eating it. She had it there simply for the doubters. The resurrection of Jesus throughout the years has been critically examined, judged by authorities, editorialized by writers, and the conclusion of some, and it is only some, is that it is simply an event which can't be proven and probably too good to be true. It may look like an apple, but in actuality, it's artificial fruit, they conclude. Maybe they're afraid that if it is true, they're going to have to change their lives. Maybe they have been burned too many times by events in their lives that they're unable of themselves to have hope anymore. Maybe they are simply like children pouting in a corner, unwilling to join the party on any terms but their own. But if you pick up the apple of the resurrection and take a bite, you come to know that he really did rise from the grave. He is alive. He is listening to our prayers. He is ready to serve when that service deals with the human heart in need of a shepherd's guidance and love. Let's look at what Luke has to say about Easter morning. Jesus died at about 3 p.m. on Friday afternoon. He was buried in a hurry because the Jewish Sabbath began at sundown and no burial or any kind of work was permitted on the Sabbath. 
In fact, the burial was so hurried that there was no time for the women to anoint the body with spices, as was their custom. The first opportunity to do that was the following Sunday morning. It is interesting that God allowed women to be the first to tell the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Women were not allowed to give testimony in first century Jewish courts, and so if the resurrection story had been a made-up story by the early church, they would never have made women the star witnesses. They reported what was later confirmed by hundreds of witnesses. Jesus Christ was indeed risen from the dead. The tomb of Confucius is occupied. The tomb of Buddha is occupied. The tomb of Mohammed is occupied but the tomb of Jesus Christ is empty. If not artificial apples, how about Easter eggs? How many of you have already found Easter eggs this morning? I know a lot of the kids did, right? They are a symbol of what happened on the third day after Jesus died. He rose. The stone rolled. The seal was broken. Christ arose. On the third day after disaster, when expectations were at a low ebb, joy broke out on earth all over again. Every one of you here this morning has experienced third days in your lives. Experiences, moments, sometimes years, that appear to offer us nothing but grief and to put your head down and nose to the grindstone, just get through it mentality. Days that were end of your rope, quicksand under your feet, times of your lives. But if you trust God's grace against all expectations, these third days have and can be for you a resurrection and an Easter egg of divine surprise. On the third day, God seals the covenant with Moses. On the third day, Esther goes to the king to beg for the safety of the Jewish people. On the third day, Abraham prepares to sacrifice Isaac. Thirty times in the Old Testament, God acts on the third day in such a way that things were never the same. Your third day is your crossover moment in time beyond which nothing is the same again. A threshold moment after which nothing can ever be the same because you now see things in a different way. What's your third day? The day your marriage died? The day your child died? The day you were fired? The day you filed bankruptcy, the day you can go on and on. Will you crack open some Easter eggs this week? Better yet, will you allow some Easter eggs to crack you open this week? Will you allow God to crack open your despair, crack open your hopelessness, crack open your ennui? Crack open your habit that is destroying your life and happiness. Will you allow God to crack open your crankiness? Crack open your mediocrity? Crack open your fears? Crack open your you fill in the blank? Will you let hallelujahs fill the hollow of your soul? Will you trust God to turn your every third day into a resurrection? I have bad news for you pessimists out there. Christ is risen. I have bad news for you passionless people out there. Christ is risen. Best-selling author Michael G. Moriarty gives us a handle on what our response to these Easter eggs should be. Larry King, the CNN interviewer and radio TV personality who died last year, told of a visit to Miami's Joe Robbie Stadium before a spring training game. King said manager Tommy Lasorda was introducing him to players and having a good time. They walked past Eddie Murray at first base and Lasorda said, hey Eddie, how are you doing? 
And Murray replied simply, okay. At that, Lasorda went wild. Okay, okay, two million dollars a year? <laughs> it's March, there ain't a cloud in the sky. You're standing there wearing a major league uniform. You're 33 years old. You say, great, Tommy. You're gonna be in the Hall of Fame. You say, great, Tommy, not okay. Murray, looking at Lasorda like he was a maniac, seemed at a loss for words. So Lasorda tried it again. You say it. I feel great. And so Eddie started saying, I feel great. How about you? Christ is risen. And I feel great. <laughs> Let's tack that on for once. Christ is risen. And I feel great, as well you should. All your sins are forgiven. You're on your way to heaven. Jesus is alive and living in you. I feel great. Say it like you mean it. Christ is risen. Okay, you want to do it one more time and then we'll give up? Christ is risen. Okay, now you can go out and crack open some Easter eggs and let them crack you open. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. If we rise to confess our faith using the Nicene Creed, and that's most easily found inside the back cover of the service book. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the offer. Morning, Sam. Time for children's sermon. Good morning, Karina. We're going we're gonna to need a big, strong helper here today, so I'm going to look over here at these gentlemen because I know they can handle it, okay? Austin, there we go. We got some more here, too. Austin, there you go. There's some more. You guys, I went out the other day, and I looked for plastic Easter eggs, and nobody had any plastic Easter eggs, and this morning I found out why, because every single egg 
in every store was out here on our back lawn. Did you guys get enough out there? Good, good. Hey, at the end, at a really out of the way store, I did manage to find four eggs. And I want to tell you about these four eggs and what is in them today. I don't know what you guys found. Did you guys find that $100 bill that was in there? You did? Oh, okay. There was, there was no $100 bill. Not that I know of anyway. Anyway, so let's go through these eggs and see what we find in here, okay? I've got this red one. Now, you older ones here, you're going to be tested later on to see who was paying attention when Pastor was given a sermon because the answer was in his sermon. In this one here, I have a cross. See that? Pretty cross here. Not like that ugly one up there. That monster, that, that killing machine. This is a pretty cross, like that back there, like the other cross over here. Jesus was forced to carry his cross to his, his place of execution. Now, mind you, it was big enough and heavy enough as it was, but Jesus had been beaten within an inch of his life before that happened. Everything they could possibly do to him, they did. They spit on him. They kicked him. They punched him. They hit him with whips. And then he was forced to carry that cross to the place where he was to be executed. So in my first egg here, I had this cross. Let's look in the other one here. Let's see. What does this one have? What do you suppose we got there, Teddy? Three nails. What do I have nails for? Exactly. And how many are there? Three. One in this wrist, one in that wrist, and one through both feet. Exactly. Can imagine how that hurt because they weren't they weren't little things like this. They were big things like that, big iron spikes. And that's how Jesus was attached to the cross. And he was going to stay there till he died. So the nails are in the second one here. Let's look at my third egg and see what we got. This third egg has a... Somebody say rock so I can say stone. Okay, stone. Anyway, the stone, the giant stone, was in front of Jesus' tomb. And when he was placed into the tomb, the stone was rolled over and covered up the door. Now, these are very, very heavy. They were not something that just one man could come up and move. You had to, it took a lot to move that big stone. Okay? But they got there, and they found that stone was rolled away. And that brings me to the last egg. This one right here. Yeah. Now, who is paying attention and who can tell me what's in this egg? We got it here. She said nothing. I'm going to use the word empty. What does this represent? Our sins are gone. That's true. But Jesus' tomb was empty. The ladies went to, to anoint his body. They found the stone rolled away. They thought somebody had taken Jesus. People still didn't believe it because they know he died. They know he died. The centurion came along and stabbed him with a sword. And Jesus didn't even bleed because he was dead. He was placed in that tomb, but that tomb couldn't hold him. And God had promised that since the beginning of time. Jesus' empty tomb is why we're here today. Our sins are forgiven. We're here to celebrate Easter. It's a beautiful day. Friends and family, you're going to enjoy the rest of the day. And you're going to enjoy your rest of your life, too, when you realize that God has your back. And he's going to be back to take you to heaven with him. Can we pray together? Dearest Jesus, thank you for the empty tomb. We know you walked out. We know you live. We know you're preparing a place for us in heaven. In your precious name we pray. Amen. You guys have a great day. Thank you. We rise for the prayers followed by the communion. Let us pray.
Christ, raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no more power over him. Let us pray for ourselves and for all Christ's members, that as we have been baptized into his saving death, so we may proclaim his resurrection to all people. For the Church, witness to the risen Christ, our victory over sin, death, and hell, for all preachers of the gospel, that they may proclaim effectively the promise of new life shown forth in the resurrection of your Son. For all the newly baptized, that the Spirit bring them to a full knowledge of Christ's love, we pray. For our government and every institution ordained by you for human benefit, good order, and peace. For all the nations, that the kingdoms of this world may more truly become the kingdom of our Christ. For the wealth of the land, that all may have plenty, and that all want and need may be banished, we pray. For all the sick, lonely, distressed, or dying, that they might have aid and comfort. In particular, do we remember Kim Sinclair and Bobby DeVries, and those others that we name in our hearts. For love, faith, and hope within our own hearts, and for all your faithful everywhere, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
we rise for the post-communion on page 181. pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Christ is risen, and I feel great. Amen. It's good to be with you this morning. It's good to see you all here, and I want to welcome our visitors. Anyone visiting us, we welcome you. And uh, if you don't have a church home, please consider St. John. We would love to have you as part of our family here. I just have a couple of announcements. Uh, the call committee is meeting on Wednesday. That's the 20th at 7 p.m., so Wednesday evening for the call committee uh, here at church. Also on Wednesday, uh, at some time during the day, we will have to firm that up as we learn. Uh, our sister Linda Walters will be moving uh, to a new apartment, and she needs some help. She needs some, some folks, some guys with um, pickup trucks and... Uh, able to uh, lift some of her furniture uh, to move her. So um, I think uh, she will have a firmed up time sometime before then, I hope, and we'll let Jan know so she can pass it out to us. Okay, so anybody who can help uh, Linda move, we would she would appreciate it, we would appreciate it. So have a great morning and a great Easter celebration.
God be with us.